A mighty a-hole for not inviting my parents to my wedding and anyone from that family? Plus update. Original post. I, 27, and my husband, 28, are going to get married in January. On his side, everyone is invited. But on mine, I only invited my aunt and her husband. When my parents and the rest of my family found out, they caused a ruckus and called me names. But I have justification for what I did. Context. I was the first daughter or granddaughter and niece. I was everyone's spoiled girl until more babies came. And when I was eight, my little sister was born. My grandparents and my mom stopped treating me in a special way. If my sister broke something of mine, she wouldn't get punished. But if I called her something, I'd be punished. Once she even broke my glasses and I was punished. My father was present for some time, but then he disappeared. The money was always constant, but not the visits or calls. When I was 11, I was closer to my maternal aunt who lived kilometers away from me than to my uncle's grandparents and my mother who lived with me. That aunt is 9 years older than me and she is my mother's half-sister. And even though I only saw her on Christmas, birthdays and holidays, we spoke two times a day on phone calls. One day when I was 12 and she was 21, I decided to spend a summer vacation at her house. Even though my mother did not think my aunts would be able to take care of me, those were the two best months of my life. After my vacation, I studied more and was a good student so they would let me go to her house again. But everything was ruined when my math grades began to go down. Even though I was putting in effort and my aunt even paid for a tutor for me, my grades didn't get better. My aunt came to visit in the middle of the school year and went to see what was happening in school with my mom. It was then that my teacher explained I wasn't paying attention in class because I was very lovey-dovey with a classmate. My mother and aunt were shocked and asked why I was saying this. The teacher then explained that I was a lesbian and my classmate was my girlfriend. And that is an institution they cannot accept that. It was a religious school. My aunt raised hell and said they'd sue for discrimination. But my mother believed him. When we came home, she hit me and outed me to the entire family. I wasn't a lesbian and that girlfriend was just a friend. My aunt got in the middle of it and defended me. It was then that my mom kicked me out and told my aunt if she was so into defending me, I could stay with her because I was a shameful person and she would not go through this with the neighbors. My aunt didn't think twice and took me with her and later called my father to tell him. They both made a formal complaint and formally confirmed I'd be staying with my aunt. My grandmother, who lived with my aunt, also shamed me for being supposedly a lesbian, but my aunt, who owned a house, kicked her out. From that day on, my aunt and her husband, who was then just her boyfriend, took care of me as if I was their daughter. When I was 15, they adopted me. They paid for my college fees and during all that time, made me go to therapy. I must say, this all affected me greatly, but the love they gave me helped incredibly. To me, they are my parents, not my aunt and uncle. Now, when my family found out I was to marry a man, they came to me and apologized. And I accepted, but even so, I did not wish to reconnect with them. But they thought with the apology, they were more than invited to the wedding. And two weeks ago, my mother and grandma came to my dress appointment. I was incensed. They had not been invited, and I kicked them out. They got angry and started insulting me and my husband. I told them that I didn't want them in my life and that I only accepted their apologies for my mental health. Even so, three days ago, a cousin of my father called me to ask about the dress code and if kids are okay at the wedding. And I told her that she, along with the rest of that family, was not invited. She got angry with me and minutes later, my father called me to ask who he was giving me to. I told him it would be my father, my uncle, who do that. And he called me a bunch of names. I just simply hanged up. So, am I the a-hole? My mom says if I don't want those people in my wedding, she'll support me. But my mother-in-law says family's family no matter what. Now for the top comments before reading the update. You are not the bad one. Your aunt and uncle deserve to be there. Your parents don't. For many reasons, they are bad parents. They kicked you out of their lives. Now they don't deserve to come back. They didn't want to be part of Opie's life when she was a child and needed them. Now that they realize she is over them and doesn't want to be part of their lives either, they are mad about it. They don't care about Opie or her wedding. They just don't like the shoe being on the other foot. Not the a-hole. It's your wedding. You and your husband decide who is going to be invited. It sounds to me like you have very compelling reasons for not inviting those family members. However, I would advise you to hire security to kick these people out. Because I can almost guarantee you that they'll try to show up. Thank you very much. I saw several comments about security, so I will keep that in mind to do it. The last thing I want is for them to break into my wedding. A really fascinating trick would be to do what a couple did a few years ago. Send invites to the wedding to the family, but a date on them is changed to a week later. Someone you trust can meet them at the venue to let them know you are already on the honeymoon. In many places, you can hire a police detail for a wedding. 
It's a little more than security, but people will take it seriously. If they don't follow officers' orders, they can be arrested, whereas most rude people will feel fine disregarding a security guard. Call the non-emergency number for the police department that operates in the town slash district of your wedding venue and or reception. Ask for the details from the coordinator. Thank you very much. I had no idea about that. I will take it into account and do it. I have all the background of what happened when I was a child, and that can help me. You are amazing. Thanks again. You are doing the right thing. These people are trash. Sure, they apologize to you, but they still feel it was appropriate to disown you and treat you like trash because they're homophobic monsters. If you were gay, they would still be treating you that way. They are bad people and they do not deserve your pity, much less your concern. Let them die mad. Have your aunt send out a blast text to the whole family, telling them they are not invited, and that there will be security at the venue to prevent anyone without an invite from getting in. They don't get to pretend they view you as family, but they have spent years making sure you knew exactly how little they thought of you. Tell your future mother-in-law that her family is not your family. No matter what, it's an insane thing to say about people who abused you. Make sure she understands that this is a hill you will die on, and that your abusers, make sure you use that word, are not going to be allowed to force their way into your life no matter who they share genes with. If future mother-in-law hasn't experienced abuse, she has no business speaking to your situation. Until today, my mother-in-law did not know my real history with them because I did not think it was necessary. But I did it because my aunt slash mother told me that it would be good for her to know my reasons. It was a horrible thing for her to know, and now she is totally okay with them coming back into my life. Now for the update. It's been nearly a month since my first post, and I wanted to explain some things that have happened to me. I told my mother-in-law about everything my family did to me in the past. At first, she seemed supportive, but then my husband found out she was still in contact with my parents, and he decided to cut her off. He advised her that if she continued down this path, she'd never meet future grandchildren. He also told her that the only way she'd be able to come back into our lives was if she apologized to meet my adoptive parents. He also told his father and brothers that if they'd tried to intervene between us, my family and his mother, they'd also be cut off from our lives, and that of our future kids. One thing I did not mention was everything around my father and my sister. Turns out, after my father decided he couldn't take care of me and let me go live with my aunt, he and my mother got back together and had a son. My sister thought I lived with my dad, and I thought she had a much better life. But as I've found out, my ex-family mistreated her day and night. They basically had her kidnapped, and she couldn't use the phone or the internet, even though she is not a minor. When we found out, we went to get her. I must say it wasn't the best way. We followed her until we found her uni. There, we kind of ambushed her and asked her to come with us. She was very happy to see us and came with us. Together, we talked about it all. We apologized to each other and told everything. We both were victims of our parents. Right now, my adoptive parents are fighting for custody of our little brother. With my sister's and mine's witness statements, we hope to win. We also got my sister therapy to help her a bit with all of the trauma. As for my wedding, we decided to rush it and have a small wedding. With only my adoptive parents, my siblings, my parents had a few more kids, some friends, and my husband's father and brother. We told no one to have no surprises. Thank you for your advice and support. Next story. Am I the a-hole for being mad that my boyfriend's ex-wife ruined my birthday plans? I'm a 38-year-old female. Been with my boyfriend for four years now. His ex has always been an issue, but we deal with it. He has a 14-year-old son. I don't have much of a relationship with him because his mom doesn't like the fact that his dad moved on after the divorce and she hasn't. She was caught cheating by the way, and the man she cheated with went back to his wife. So she is bitter towards us. Now, my boyfriend and I have been making plans for my birthday. We plan a date together, going on a short road trip, and then dinner. My boyfriend already told his ex that he would be out of town that day if their son needed anything. Everything was fine, up until that morning. He gets a call that his son's mother has decided to go out of town and she was dropping their son off. I ask him to inform her that we had plans as discussed previous and she needs to adhere to the plans. It was her weekend to have him anyway. My boyfriend refused. Any other time, I tell him his kids come first, but this was my day. My one day out of the year that I asked to be accommodated. I never ask for anything during the holidays. This is just my day. His son gets bored easily and is constantly complaining so the entire day will be miserable with him constantly waiting to go home. My boyfriend asked if we could reschedule, and I told him no. This is the one time I asked him to do for me and he can't? I told him to have a great day with his son. I was going to celebrate by myself. He got mad and said I was not being fair. 
I explained to him that it isn't fair for him to cower down to his ex-wife and stick the plans. She knew we were going out of town. So I left and did my own thing by myself. Am I the a-hole for celebrating my birthday without him? Now for the top comments. Why tell her plans so she can ruin them? He's 14, not an infant. I dump him for this. Exactly. It wasn't even their weekend. I get letting her know in case of emergency, but send a text after you are already there. That depends, because if there is a legal custody structure, then part of the agreement might be advance notice about going out of town, slash restrictions and availability in case of emergency. It might also require that if there is an emergency and or something comes up, then he has to take his son or she can fight to make him lose rights, which would give her more leverage to make his life and his relationship miserable by holding their son over his head. In my situation, my mother had custody but my neglectful father and stepmom, whose oldest son was her golden child, and her husband and younger son still came before me by far, would fight for custody of me and plays lots of games, including tricking me and trying to poison me against my mother. So trust me, without more information, we can't actually know why he said no and asked to reschedule. At least he knew what his son is like and didn't ask to include him in Opie's birthday plans, right? Sorry, but mom is responsible for making arrangements for the child. Dad may have first opportunity, but is not obligated to be mom's backup plan. Dad got played by mom. Girlfriend is entitled to be mad, but mom has been frustrating slash interfering girlfriend's relationship with dad for a while. Dad isn't likely to change at this point, and so girlfriend's option is to live with this likelihood or move on. Good luck. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Since it was her weekend to have the kid, she did it on purpose. She did. She always does this. But I thought being that it was my birthday and the only time I asked for something, he would understand. The only reason she did this is because your boyfriend allowed her to. He should have stood firm it was her weekend. She knew you guys had plans and she is being manipulative. You don't have an ex-wife problem. You have a boyfriend problem. Last story. Am I the a-hole for not giving my son's half-sibling's mother half the money their father sends me? I have a son with a man named Michael. Michael has two children with a woman named Kathleen. Neither of us is currently in a relationship with Michael and don't exactly know where he is because he moves around a lot. Kathleen and I, as well as Michael's parents, do keep in touch for the kids. Every month, Michael will send me money through his friend. Given Michael's disdain for her and her financial difficulties, I assumed that he was not sending her any money. I didn't want to seem like I was bragging or anything, so I never brought up the money that Michael was sending me. Apparently, she always assumed I had a high-paying job. It only recently found out from Michael's parents that was not true, and it came to light that Michael was sending me money. So now, she wants me to give her half the money that Michael is sending me. She even suggested she was being generous, since she should really get two-thirds, since she has two kids with Michael and I only have one. The thing is, giving away half the money would really be a big financial blow to me and my son. It would mean a drastic change in our lifestyle, and we would have to move. I also wouldn't be able to put aside any more money for emergencies or for his future education. So far, I only have a small amount saved, but by the time he's 18, it should be a good amount to get him started. I do realize this is unfair to Kathleen and her kids, but as my son's mother, I do feel like it's my job to put him first and set him up for the best future I can. Ultimately, I think we can all agree that Michael is the main a-hole here, but I wonder if I'm too. I can live with it if I'm being an a-hole too, but maybe knowing how much I am will help me with how I further interact with Kathleen. Edit. It keeps being brought up, so I thought I should add that I do have a child support order. So does Kathleen. Kathleen hasn't been able to enforce hers because Michael gets paid under the table and doesn't have a bank account. Not the a-hole. Kathleen needs to settle this with Michael, not you. Exactly. OP is not being unfair to Kathleen. Michael is, and she can take him to court. OP, it is not your job to provide for Michael's other children. That's his job. Not the a-hole. Exactly. OP only has responsibility to her son, and not to Kathleen and her children. While I understand it's not fair in Kathleen or her kids, it doesn't give her an excuse to behave entitled towards OP. Not the a-hole, OP. Just take care of your child and don't mind Kathleen. Not the a-hole. This has nothing to do with you, and is 100% a matter between her and the guy she has two kids with. If she does go to court, it would be against him, not you. Technically, you have zero reasons to even communicate with her. However, you are getting money through the guy's friend, so that's not exactly reliable. I would not be basing my current lifestyle around such a nebulous source of money that could go away entirely at any point. This. OMG. That friend could be skimming some of it off the top already. 
True, but it's also just as possible that they aren't, or even coming through and supplying the cash, even when Michael is short slash late slash doesn't send it. It's good to be skeptical, but there are still some good people left in the world. If she is receiving the court-ordered amount, it doesn't matter. He apparently doesn't want his address or back info available to her, 